So I'm sitting in front of my pumpkin patch right now, and every day I come outside and see them completely wilted down. Have you guys come out to your pumpkins or squash looking like this? Seriously, let me know in the comments if you've ever had this happen. It does look worrisome, and sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. But how do you know? Well, first of all, if it's sunny and hot, you can pretty much bet that it's just that, wilting from the heat. How do you feel when you're out in the hot sun for even an hour, let alone for the entire day, like these guys are every single day? So they're allowed to be a little dramatic. And that's all it is, just the plants conserving water, uh, drawing it down into the stems so that the leaves wilt. Another sign is that it's the heat and not something else is that they all look that way. There's even wilting among all of the plants. That's a sure sign of heat. By the end of the day, once the sun has gone down, even for just a little bit, they're back to normal. So this is nothing to worry about. But when should you worry? Well, if it's one or two plants that wilt down and the rest are fine, it's time to investigate. There are a couple of things that can be wrong. It could be a bacterial wilt, or it could be squash vine borer. So let's identify the problems and then come up with a solution or at least a preventative. If the plants are relatively small and the whole plant wilts and dies, and you find that the stem near the ground is thin and looks rotten, the problem was most likely too much moisture at the base of the plant. And this happens a lot when mulch is piled up around the stem. So to prevent that, keep the mulch pushed about two inches away from the stem. It's that simple. But it isn't always that simple. If the plants are bigger and you see a plant wilt in the day, but they're better in the morning, um, but they aren't all doing it, if it's just one or two, keep a close eye on it. If it then starts to look like a dull green color and the ends start to die, you probably have bacterial wilt. The ends will die and it will slowly travel toward the crown or the base of the plant where it comes out of the ground until the whole plant dies. Usually the culprit is striped cucumber beetle. Not all of the cucumber beetles carry the bacteria. Um, beetles that feed on infected plants pick up the bacteria and then it infects the plant, uh, another plant, by biting it or pooping in an open wound that's been already bitten on, on that new plant that hasn't been affected yet. So how do we prevent this? Because there really is no cure. First of all, remove any beetles that you find and destroy all plant material. You don't want to give the beetles anywhere to overwinter. So any squash leaves that are dead on the ground. The disease itself doesn't overwinter in the soil or on plant material, but it does overwinter in the gut of the cucumber beetles. So don't provide them any shelter through the winter. The next spring, you can cover your plants with floating row covers to physically keep them off. And you can also look to companion planting. In this case, planting a trap crop of blue Hubbard squash 10 to 20 feet away from the squash that you want. Cucumber beetles, they like uh, blue Hubbard squash better than any other squash and will go to it instead of your prized crops. The floating row covers will also deter the squash vine borer. The squash vine borer is a moth whose larvae feed inside the vine and crowns of summer squash, winter squash, and pumpkins. It's active, this is important, it's active most from mid-June through July. So the larva actually eating the inside of that vine um, causes yellowing leaves and wilting, and the wilting might only occur in the sun at first, but soon the entire plant will just up and die. The larva eat so much of the stalk that it cuts off the water and nutrients that are coming from the soil. So starting in early June, cover the plants with floating row covers until the end of July. 
and then covers have to be removed when the flowering starts to let in the pollinators. So you have to time it just right or plant them early in the season or late in the season um, so they won't be growing at the time that the squash vine borers are active. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can hunt for the eggs on the plant and squish them, or you could employ some companion planting to get the job done for you. Planting sweet alyssum, dill, and uh, fennel and letting them go to flower will attract parasitic wasps that will find the vine borers eggs, lay their own eggs inside those, and the babies will eat the developing larva um, right inside the egg. So it stops the problem before it's even a problem. If you want more companion planting tips and tricks like these, check out my new book, Companion Planting for Beginners. I'll leave a link down in the video description for that. I also have another video uh, about squash vine borer. There's a lot to talk about there. Um, a lot of different preventative measures and a lot of ways that you can actually, if you find that larva in there, you can get rid of it. So I'll leave a link down to that below or you can click right up here. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up, share it with a friend if you would, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, keep growing.